Right, from travel to the healthcare industry, artificial intelligence is transforming our lives daily. Now the University of Michigan is exploring the ways that the technology could change how we interact with our pets. Researchers are developing tools that they say can help identify whether a dog's bark is playful or aggressive. Let's bring in electrical engineering and computer science professor Rada Mihalcha. Professor, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So this is fascinating. I mean, AI is incredible. It seems advanced, futuristic, but this seems almost too good to be true. So how could this possibly work? Well, so AI can generally distinguish between various patterns. Um, a lot of what we see out there, even when it comes to human speech, um, is AI systems that learn from data. Um, and so that's what we see here as well. Uh, we had data that was collected by collaborators at Inaue in uh, Mexico, and um, which are essentially dogs barking in various situations. And the AI is trained on that data to learn to distinguish uh, what kind of barks are associated with what kind of um, situations. Hmm. So is this kind of similar to with human speech, maybe with the tone of the voice, where you can kind of tell the intent of the message based on the tone? Yes, so it's along similar lines. It's uh, the pitch is the um, length of the pauses, um, is um, frequency and a lot of these um, acoustic patterns that all together eventually do have meaning. Uh, one thing that we've done and we are quite excited about it's actually very hard to get this kind of data um, because it takes a lot of effort. And again, a lot of the credit goes to our collaborators in, in Mexico for that. Um, but we don't really have enough to train an AI system from scratch. So what we've done, we pre-train a model on human speech and we found that that's actually um, helpful, uh, which is not to say that human speech and dog barks have a lot in common, but some of those patterns turn out to be helpful. So um, we found that we actually don't have to start from scratch. So what is the hope for the future? What could this eventually lead to as far as how it could be used in everyday or real life situations? Well, I think it's really just the beginning and I hope there will be much more research in this space, not only from our lab, from other labs as well. There is a lot of work by biologists and um, animal behaviorist, uh, but I think computer scientists can also help as well. Um, I'm personally fascinated by intelligence and there is a lot of other forms of intelligence out there, including from dogs and other animals. I think this can also help with um, animal welfare. If you think of dogs at the veterinary, there is a lot of guessing, um, so maybe we could do more. And generally learning how they communicate, what they communicate, uh, which likely will be very different from what we do as humans, uh, but it's a world we don't really know a lot about. So this could come in handy with people who say, oh, he doesn't bite, and then you lean in and the dog goes, <laughs> so then you know, okay, Let he said otherwise. <laughs> uh, do you think that this is going to get more of the tones, or are we just getting phrases? Like, exactly what is the, the research showing us so far? <laughs> So, so far, it's really we identify associations between the sounds of vocalizations and context, which in a way is really what we do as humans, right? So I'm uttering certain words because I'm here speaking with you. I would utter other words if I speak to my kids. Um, so right now it's very coarse, um, but I think it will eventually become more fine grained. I think we also need to go outside our own way of thinking about human speech and start thinking out of the box, um, which eventually will come with more data. So we can learn ways in which maybe dogs or birds or other animals communicate with one another, which maybe is different. It might not be words and phrases. It might be other ways. Uh, and in fact, we already know that some animals communicate in other ways. So I think there is a lot to learn about um, and figure out how this communication happens. Yeah, just fascinating to think about where all of this could be headed. I hope to find something in the future where we can translate us to the dog. Let me sure. just confirm, Ziggy, <laughs> that you did understand yeah. what I just yeah. said. Her, her dog, Ziggy, definitely needs that, so yeah. we can make sure he knows Doesn't what you're like saying. Doesn't like to listen. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Professor Radha Mihalcha, thank you so much for sharing your work with us today. Thanks for having me.